you're listening to the Telltale channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. In this podcast, we're going to talk about what the Reawaken America tour is and why we should be paying attention. Pastor Lance Walnaw's bizarre framing of the Don't Say Gay bill. Mike Lindell's most recent plan to retake the presidency for Donald Trump. We also take voicemails. If you want to leave a voicemail, the number is 1-800-701-8573. If you want to send an email instead, the email address is telltalemailbag at gmail.com. Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Hey, Owen. My name's Jay, and I'm actually a theistic Satanist. I do believe in Satan as a god. I can't back it up with science, but I heavily support all that you do in exposing cults and cult members. And there's actually a Satanic group called JOS Ministries. I don't consider them to be a true Satanic group because they preach hate, and I was wondering if sometime you could cover them and just give some information on them. Everything on their website is actually copyrighted, so you'd have to dance around it a little bit in explaining things. Thanks a lot. You have a great day. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I just want to point something out. I'm glad that you're a fan, and I appreciate you coming and giving all my stuff a listen. Although I did detect a little bit of a no true Scotsman fallacy popping up there, where you said they're not true Satanists because they are hateful. I don't know. I think I think Satanist is a label that people kind of self-ascribe. So if they call themselves Satanists, I'd consider them Satanists. But yeah, I have heard of Joy of Satan before, J-O-S. I'm okay with kind of taking a quick glance through and see what they're all about here. There is no God but myself. Knowing this, who dares worship the false gods of the Quran and the Bible? Satan from the Karet al-Yazid. That's weird. Okay. Exposing Christianity. Okay, let's look at the dedicate your soul to Satan section here. What happens when I make a formal commitment to Satan? Satan looks out for his own. Satan gives us inner strength, and we become very strong in spirit, unlike right-hand path religions, where adherents are forever praying and searching for their God. Satan comes to us on his own. Many times we can feel him. He comes to guide us when we get down, worried, or experiencing problems. Wow, that's weird. So it's basically your traditional theistic, like, this is people who genuinely do worship Satan of the Bible, like the Satan of the Bible. The Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple are non-theistic Satanists. They don't really buy all of this magical stuff, for the most part. But Joy of Satan really does buy it, and they really are a hateful group on a concerning level. Uh, Definitely should be keeping an eye on this. There are others, there are other theistic Satanist groups or just Satanist groups that are hateful and dangerous, like Order of Nine Angles. That one is pretty concerning, too. Um, there are, they're out there. They are. And that, that's really concerning stuff. I honestly don't really respect religious belief at all, period, whoever it is. I respect the religious believer, but not the belief. I think it's ridiculous, and there's no reason to respect it. Um, Like I said, I'll respect the person, but every idea is open to scrutiny, in my opinion. Hi, Owen. This is Corey from South Carolina. I just find it weird how the evangelicals will always give predictions, um, especially when, if they read the Bible, it's just blaspheming. If something doesn't come true, Do they not go and repent or whatever? Or do they just want to keep on and on and on and on and dig into a grave? How does their base not realize what they're doing is wrong? All right, that's all I got for you. Yeah, interesting question. So what it boils down to to me is people like Johnny Enlow or Kat Kerr, Paula White, all of these people continue to make these prophecies, full-blown prophecies that Donald Trump is going to be the president in 2020 or whatever else, like a billion prophecies that fail. They straight up fail. They don't come true. How does the base reconcile this? How do they not see straight through this? Like they're obviously lying. And the Bible explicitly warns against people like this. In my opinion, I think the reason that people are just overlooking it and pretending that they're not spreading false prophecy 
is because the they don't want to believe it, and the pastors are giving them outs. They're giving them off ramps. They're saying Biden changed the prophecy by stealing it. Trump really did win, but Biden stole it from him, even though Trump won. So I was right all along. And that's a perfect off ramp that the evangelicals need to continue believing their pastor was right and telling the truth and not a false prophet. And also resolving that cognitive dissonance that Trump isn't the president like they said that he would be. It's a willingness to accept a nonsensical explanation in their mind, basically, is what it is. But the all the rest of the outside world looking in can see how completely absurd and ridiculous it is at its face. In fact, a lot of other evangelical Christians who don't follow Kat Kerr or Paula White or, or Johnny Enlow or any of the others, even other evangelicals can see it for what it is. Hey, Ellen, this is Brent uh, from Michigan. So you brought up a leftist conspiracy about the whole corn and fish DNA, and it got me thinking. Just give a little bit of context to this. A couple of weeks ago, I think, I mentioned some leftist conspiracies because a lot of conspiracies that we talk about come from the right in America right now. Election fraud and even a lot of flat earthers are like giga religious Christians and have like made that part of their identity. And that's tied in heavily with right wing extremism and stuff. So somebody asked me in a voicemail, like, are there any left wing conspiracies that you've heard of or left wing conspiracy theorists? And they're out there, definitely. As I said last week or whenever it was, they are definitely out there, left-wing conspiracies. I mentioned a vegan conspiracy theory about some kind of a fish having its DNA mixed with corn, and nobody was telling you about this, and it was intended to make the corn grow in colder environments. It's like GMO stuff, and they're like super anti-GMO, and that was like a left-wing conspiracy theory that I talked about. That's what this person was referencing. I know somebody, he's part of the LGBT community, um, liberal, but he thinks that they're putting chimpanzee DNA in the vaccine for, I don't know, I, I couldn't get an answer out of them. I assume you were saying you want to know if I'd heard of that. I had not heard of that. Um, they are out there, definitely. A lot of conspiracy theories, even on the left. There are a weirdly high number of anti-vax conspiracy theorists out there that are on the left, too. The right kind of picked up the mantle and became the prevailing conspiracy theorists, but, uh, yeah, the, the left is out there with them, too. We cannot discount how serious that problem is. It's just they're not the ones that are destroying society at this immediate moment. If I come across one that I feel is really pervasive and needs to be addressed, I will absolutely address it. I don't care if it's left wing or right wing. It's just the right seems to have a disproportionate amount of societal sway right now societal influence and that's why i'm really focusing in on what they're doing at the moment this email is from philip hope this email finds you well i've been watching your content for a while now and i've got to say i love it i have mad respect for you for being able to stand up and defend what you believe is right and your own and you own cats never seen a person who owns pets that's a bad person <laughs> well i appreciate that anyway here's a question that's been knocking around my empty noggin can cults be positive on a societal level since the answer on the personal level is cl is clearly not in the long term could a cult be a force for good or is it bound to always end up in disaster well, I, I mean, I guess it would depend on what you mean by force for good. There are some cults out there that, like, run soup kitchens or they run homeless shelters or whatever. That's a societal good, I guess, what they're doing there. But there's nothing stopping any other organization that is not a cult from doing that. If there's something that a cult could do, that a secular organization could not do or does not do, then I would say, yeah, I suppose so. The problem is that this group could do this without being a cult. All other things being equal, I want to eliminate the existence of the cult 
by waking everybody up inside of it and freeing them from the fabricated prison that the leaders have put them in by the prison of the mind that they've put them in. Free them from that and organize to create another soup kitchen that's free from cult influence or another homeless shelter or whatever else it is. Can cults do things for society that is beneficial? Yes, they can do things that are of benefit to society just as easily as any secular organization can. The bad that they do outweighs the good. I would still want to get rid of the cult before I accepted the help of the cult, basically. This one is from Garion. Hey, Telltale, it's Garion from California. My question is, why do Jehovah's Witnesses try to cover up or protect child abusers? Wouldn't it be better for their image to work with the authorities to properly investigate CSA in congregations? I can understand a congregation doing it, but not why the organization as a whole might. It all routes back to the two witness rule. Jehovah's Witnesses have a deeply held belief that the end is like right around the corner. It's here. Any five minutes now, it's going to happen. And when that happens, the government is going to turn on everybody and destroy everything. So the Jehovah's Witness religion as a whole is going to have to step in and fill the governmental role for its people. So it steps in now as much as possible to fill the government role. It tries to act as a government for its people. The way that it formed its government out, the Jehovah's Witness organization, is modeled after what the Bible lays out or how the biblical government was kind of set up with a set of overseers who work with the congregation. And you have to have two witnesses there to oversee contracts and things like that. The two witness rule, as they call it, is this rule where if something didn't happen to two witnesses or in front of two witnesses or didn't happen to two victims, we can't believe it. We're going to be skeptical. We'll look into it. We'll investigate. But we're not going to believe anything unless there were two victims or two witnesses to it. That is in Matthew, I think. We don't need that now, first of all, because we have DNA evidence. We have investigators. We pay for people to go around and investigate crimes and sign contracts, and we have computers that can save information and all this other stuff. We don't need to model things after the, the, the Bible's model. But aside from that, the two-witness rule wasn't even about that. It wasn't even about crimes that are committed. You don't need two victims in the Bible to establish that a crime's been committed. You handle crimes differently. The two witness rule was intended for contract signing. Like if somebody wants to buy a hoe from somebody, you know, like a, a backhoe or something, like plowing land or whatever. If they want to buy one of those from somebody, there have to be two people standing there to witness the contract signing or the contract is invalid, basically. That's what the two witness rule was originally about. But Jehovah's Witnesses applied it to crimes, like real crimes. And instead of calling the police, they decided to set this up as their judicial system. They view things as sins, not crimes. That's why they've been hesitant to call the police when there's been CSA or, or whatever else. Because they want to set up their own government. They want to get it to the point where they don't need to involve the outside government at all. In an ideal world, they would be completely separate and live on a different island entirely from the U.S. government, and they would run everything from the top down. That's why they don't report things to the authorities when they're supposed to, for example, because they're trying to set up their own government in preparation for the end. This one's from Vanessa. I noticed that someone who works at a program that deals with mental health has been reading Watchtower Scripture on the Mac while doing her work. She doesn't seem she's one person promoting her religion on others. She's kind and ca a calm person, so I have no issues with her. I'm an atheist, but I respect people who want to believe in something and they're not forcing it on others. Anyways, what are Jehovah's Witnesses' stance on people with mental health issues? I know some pastors in the States compare autism to demonic forces. 
I hadn't seen a video of Caleb and Sophia contacting somehow who mentally unstable. I'm sorry. I'm it, it's a little I'm just reading it as it was written. As someone who has schizophrenia, depression and a mild case of autism too for 20 years, I had been with a Christian fiance who'd helped me turn my life around without enforcing his beliefs on me. I don't like the idea that people say religion is a mental illness because it looks like a scapegoat answer to avoid responsibilities of their issues. Thank you kindly, and I hope to hear a response from you. Vanessa. Yeah, I appreciate that. I agree completely. I do not like it when people say religion is a mental illness. I completely disagree with that assessment. What are Jehovah's Witnesses' stance on people with mental health issues? The, in the past, historically, Jehovah's Witnesses used to be very opposed to medicine or treatments at all. Any kind of medical treatment or science or whatever, they were very opposed to it. But in recent years, they've kind of moved in more of a it's a conscience matter direction. And antidepressant pills have actually become incredibly popular in certain congregations. It's like every person in the congregation is, in, is on antidepressants, on benzodiazepines or whatever, Xanax and stuff, because it helps them make it through the miserable lives that the religion has put them in pretty much, which is so incredibly sad for them. So I would say, for the most part, they respect the mental health field mostly, but there are some old school Jehovah's Witnesses who remember a time when the Watchtower Society was heavily opposed to uh, mental health care or medicine or this thing or that thing, and they are also still very opposed to it. So it's kind of hit or miss, but there is an epidemic among Jehovah's Witnesses of antidepressant use, sadly. Next, we're going to talk about what the Reawaken America Tour is and why we should be paying attention. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. The first story I wanted to talk about is about a conference called Reawaken America. It's the Reawaken America Tour. Now, the reason I want to talk about this now is because Jim Brewer, Saturday Night Live comedian, co-star with Dave Chappelle in the movie Half-Baked, put out a response to a clip that I did about him. I criticized him for espousing some QAnon talking points, and he responded by making it all about this guilt by association because he went to the Reawaken America tour. I don't care that you went to the Reawaken America tour. It's really not about that, honestly. It really isn't. It's about your QAnon talking points. Before we actually look at the conference, let me remind you of what happened between me and Jim Brewer. This came out mid-December 2021. This was his appearance at the Reawaken America tour. This is what he had to say when he went there. This is one of his jokes. You know what a cockatoo is? A cockatoo that... And that, that's what everyone's become. <laughs> Little cockatoos staring at the screen. <laughs> facts and figures, facts and figures. Oh, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Fauci. Ah, trust the science, trust the science. Okay, now I'm not I'm not going to judge the joke. I'm not going to judge the joke here. I've talked about the joke enough times. I'm not going to to dissect it right now. But what I do want to say is this joke is clearly an anti-vax, anti-science joke, right? I'm not going to talk about how funny it was or wasn't. I'm just saying it's an anti-vax, anti-science joke, and I have a problem with that. I have a problem with the premise of the joke. So March 4th, 2022, Jim Brewer go gets on his podcast and he says this. Listen to this. But this guy again just immediately said... Uh, he's talking about me. It's basically a QAnon group. Has he been to one of these? I will put my life on it and say no. 
irrelevant. It doesn't matter if I've been to it or not. It, it matters like less than zero. What I know is that you're spreading QAnon ideas and QAnon belief systems around, and I have a problem with that, so I'm going to address it. He's judging an entire group. He's taking me and labeling me, which again is a brilliant brainwashing. That's what they do. You're brainwashed. This guy is brainwashed. Clay Clark called. Clay Clark is the organizer of the Reawaken America tour, and we're going to take a look at him in just a second. You know, I want you to be on the stage. It's, uh, it's this guy. It's General Flynn. It's a uh, pillow guy and pastors. And he said it's at a church. And I went, I'm not on the day when the other guys are on, the Flynn, the blah, blah, blah. Again, not about that. Don't care who you're sharing a stage with. You know what is my business? Cults and extremism and extremist messages, which is what you spread when you went to the Reawaken America tour and outside of that too, on your own YouTube channel, the Bruniverse podcast, you've been spreading extremist QAnon messages. Now it's my business as far as I'm concerned because I deal with cults and extremism. That's what I do. You want to make light of the fact that you went to this conference. You wanted to make this about a guilt by association thing. You think my complaint is about that, though it's not. I understand that it's not a problem necessarily for people to go to these conferences and make appearances, it, especially if they're giving messages that are counter to what the overarching narrative is of the conference. But that's not what you did. You went to this conference and you spread a very specific narrative. Now, let me show you what Clay Clark thinks about having big people show up at his conference, like you, for example. Eric Trump has now joined the tour. And what that does, by Eric joining the tour, what that does is that brings people to the events that uh, maybe think shows like yours and mine are crazy shows. Eric Trump showed up at the Reawaken America tour and Clay Clark recognized the fact that that lends credibility to his conference, his QAnon conference. It lends credibility to it when big, famous, big name people show up like you, like Eric Trump. He recognizes the importance of that validity because we share so much truth, Pete, you know, on your our show, we're, we're, we're your show, Pete, is basically the show that uh, covers the stuff that Fox News will not touch. I mean, it, it, anything that Fox News won't touch or Newsmax won't touch, that's what you cover. It's called the truth. And uh, bringing Eric Trump to this event is now uh, legitimizing what we're doing in the minds of many people. And so that's powerful. And I, I, uh, I look forward for I look for the moment, the momentum to continue. Wow. OK, the truth. I guess Pete, Pete Santilli here is laying the truth on the line for us, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, Pete Santilli actually did show up at the Reawaken America tour. So did Clay Clark. Of course, he's the organizer. So who is this Pete Santilli fella? Who is this guy that Jim Brewer gave validity to by showing up at the same tour? What kinds of things is Pete Santilli saying? Listen to this. This is Pete Santilli on his show talking to Deanna Lorraine, who was a candidate for Congress at one point, and she's also an employee, a, a host at InfoWars for a while. Check out what Pete Santilli has to say. This is early August 2021. These are the types of people you're bringing to the Reawaken America tour. The people now that are learning more about the adverse impact of getting vaccinated, they're having mm -hmm. regrets about it because... Just want to put on record the adverse side effects, quote unquote, that Pete is talking about here, completely fabricated. He lives in paranoia land pretty much 24 seven. We're hearing about this shedding uh, that's yeah. going on and- the Vaccine shedding. It is possible for certain vaccines to shed, as they're saying, this one does not. It is not possible for the COVID vaccine to shed. It doesn't happen. This is fabricated. Shedding and, and also, um, the, the the activation of the graphene oxide is actually it does not have graphene oxide in it the vaccine doesn't none of the covid vaccines have graphene oxide activation of the graphene oxide is actually sitting there dormant but if it gets energized by something like 5g god i love when they work 5g into their conspiracy theories there is no graphene oxide in the covid vaccines 
5G has no effect on graphene oxide or the vaccines or any of that stuff. There is no vaccine shedding, quote unquote. This is all just complete fabricated nonsense. Keep listening. But if it gets energized by something like 5G, it actually kills all the cells around it. That is so crazy to me. I mean, can you imagine if they just like activate and said, oh, all right, a million people are going to be gone, you know, just by right. energizing the graphene oxide. Well, I, I've got bad news for you, man. Um, 5G is already in the United States. As a matter of fact, 5G is already all over the world in many parts of the world. So your your fears about it activating something in the vaccine or whatever, it's just fabricated nonsense. It's all completely made up. And guess what? This guy was at the Reawaken America tour. This guy was just talking to Clay Clark, the organizer, about how valuable it is that somebody like Eric Trump showed up to the Reawaken America tour because it adds validity to what Pete Santilli says. Remember? Trump has now joined the tour, and what that does, by Eric joining the tour, what that does is that brings people to the events that uh, maybe think shows like yours and mine are crazy shows they are crazy shows not bad enough for you was pete santilli's little diatribe there not quite bad enough how about this one listen to this one this is greg Locke. he showed up at the reawaken america tour too late september 2021 check this one out we so believe in our first amendment right to gather and worship jesus christ that if you show up and you impede on our First Amendment right, we will meet you at the door of our tent with our Second Amendment right because we're not playing your Democrat games. We carry a Bible for devils and we carry guns for dummies, praise God, all right? The reason we got so many popsicles in the pews is because we got too many polar bears in the pulpit, amen? Amen. What was that amen? Let's listen to that one more time. The reason we got so many popsicles in the pews is because we got too many polar bears in the pulpit, amen? I... I, um, I agree. I agree. I think I agree is the appropriate response to that. The point is that Greg Locke is both unhinged based on that last thing he said, disconnected from reality. I think that covers it too. And also dangerous, violent. He is expressing violent rhetoric here. He, he is expressing an interest in violence. We carry a Bible for devils and we carry guns for dummies. Praise God. All right. We just listened to the opener again. We so believe in our First Amendment right to gather and worship Jesus Christ. That if you show up and you impede on our First Amendment right, we will meet you at the door of our tent with our Second Amendment right because we're not playing your Democrat games. What he's referring to is the lockdowns. He, this Right here, this part that he was talking about, he led up to this with a whole thing about how there was a lockdown and he, refu and he refused to shut down and the news showed up. He refused to go online, like do Zoom meetings or whatever, and the news showed up and the sheriff showed up to tell him to not hold in-person meetings, hold online meetings. And he said, we're going to pull the guns out if you try to you know, bring us to jail or whatever. That's what Locke was saying at the Reawaken America tour. This is who you're sharing a stage with, Jim. I just wanna make sure you're aware of that. Not that it matters. My argument against you is the fact that you're espousing QAnon talking points. That's what it was about. I just want to make sure that we're all clear and we have it on record exactly what was happening. Exactly what took place at the Reawaken America tour. Exactly who you shared a stage with. I don't care about Michael Flynn. I don't care about the pillow guy as much. I mean, they're bad. Absolutely, they're terrible. But honestly, what worries me more than those two are the ones you don't know about. The ones you haven't heard about. Lee Dundas or Patriot Street Fighter, who we're about to look at next. Or Pete Santilli or Kevin Sorbo's wife, Sam Sorbo. These are truly deranged people. No joke. Still not bad enough for you? Was the lock thing not quite bad enough? How about this one? This one's Patriot Street Fighter, mid-January 2022. This guy's real name is Scott McKay. His stage name is Patriot Street Fighter. He just, he goes by either. Listen to this one. My next target, knowingly or unknowingly on their behalf, any of these doctors or nurses around the country 
that are involved in the murder of our people. They're going to be spotlighted. As you know, I'm dragging them out in the open. We're going to spotlight them, show them to the whole world. I'm going to be named them by names. If you have the courage to kill our people, you better have the courage to stand in the direct crosshairs of Patriot Street Fighter because this is now going to happen. What he's saying here is he intends to spread the names of healthcare workers out to his QAnon patriot, quote unquote, patriot groups across the country. Anybody in these patriot groups, as they call themselves, are going to have names of healthcare workers to target. There's no playing nice in this war because this is World War Four. He believes that COVID is World War Four. He believes that like people across the world are being targeted and taken out with COVID because it's like a weapon that the elites are using against, I don't even know. It just gets more and more unhinged as we go. World War Three was the Cold War. World War Four has been underway for decades. The elite powers in this world have decided to come after all of us and eliminate us from the planet. Yeah, he, th he believes in this whole depopulation thing. Like He thinks that the quote-unquote elites are trying to depopulate the earth and take out people like him, I guess. And he's, he, he's basically declared war on people and thinks that COVID is like their attempt to like attack them or something like that. Now he's in this war mindset. He's willing to do literally anything, literally anything to win this war as he sees it. And I don't mean maybe, it should become an apparent to people in this day and age that they have created a global matrix system to kill us, to help us murder ourselves through chemtrails, through the corporate food industry, from big pharma, from the influence of the big media. This is all built not for your benefit or commerce. It's built to create a commerce machine that they can keep, keep you working to keep that matrix running taking the money and profit from it, from you, even the stores you buy in, to use that money to try to kill you. Absolutely unhinged from reality. You know, when I was younger, we used to sit here and kind of chuckle at people who, like, believed in chemtrails. People who didn't believe in the moon landing, they thought it was faked. People like that, we laughed at them, at flat earthers and stuff. Well, now, people like that, conspiracy theorists who are going down that rabbit hole, have taken a violent streak on and are willing to do absolutely anything, absolutely anything, to uncover the fake information and all of that stuff. It's getting pretty concerning with people like this. This is who you shared a, sh a stage with, Jim. This guy right here. How about this one? This one is uh, late March 2022. This is recent. Check this one out. Same guy, Scott McKay, a.k.a. Patriot Street Fighter. They're killing you in the streets. They launched Antifa and BLM. That's when I blew the gasket. That's when I said, okay, no governor, no president, no state legislature is gonna say it, then I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna rain this shit storm down on all these scumbags until they are dead. We are now in the violent phase of this movement. These people are willing to do absolutely anything. And once again, who shared a stage with Scott McKay? Who shared a stage with Lee Dundas, with Eric Trump, Pete Santilli? Who shared a stage with them? Jim Brewer did. Jim Brewer did. Once again, it's not about who you shared a stage with. I just want to put that on record. It really isn't. But since you brought it up, I thought I would clarify for you. This right here, this video that we're about to watch, this is where my qualms come in. This is what I had a problem with originally. I'm telling you people, when you see this, it's a very special club. You had to be indoctrinated to get that club. When you see black eyes, that's a club. You have to be indoctrinated by that club. There you go, that's the meat dress of Lady Gaga. Now, you ain't telling me she joined a special creepy, demonic club. And when these people are finally put in that category, the demons that are pulling their strings put them on the highest, highest ladder to become popular, to sway everyone in the wrong direction. It's yep. been 
classic move since the beginning of time. Roman Empire, it goes on and on and on and on. That's really what I had the problem with. These are straight out of the QAnon playbook. All of this stuff that you're saying, it all perfectly mirrors the QAnon movement and, and belief system. That's what I have a problem with. But since you mention it, since you're bringing up this guilt by association thing, okay, yeah, I guess I do have a problem with you sharing a stage with Scott McKay, Patriot Street Fighter. Absolutely. That I'm going to say it, I'm going to come out, and I'm going to rain this shit storm down on all these scumbags until they are dead. Yeah, I, I do have a, a little bit of a problem with that since you bring it up. Uh, I do have a problem with you sharing a stage and legitimizing and validating a lot of these people. That is a little bit of a concern to me, Jim. Um, but once again, my main concern is the QAnon talking points, which, by the way, in our back and forth is something you still haven't addressed. I would love to hear what you have to say about the QAnon belief systems that you've espoused so far. Lulu Girl, welcome. A reason to avoid debating Jim is that his crowd is not capable of learning and it could just put you in danger. They're crazy. That's a good point. Although I've been in danger before and I feel like I'm pretty safe from any kind of retribution at this point. I've taken measures to make sure that I'm in a safe, undisclosed location that is not easily trackable. So there's that for th that exact reason, because people have chased me down and it's gotten concerning, you know. Next, we're going to talk about Pastor Lance Walna's bizarre framing of the Don't Say Gay Bill. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Next story I wanted to talk about is about a guy named Lance Walna. Now, I've talked about this guy a few times before, but he had some interesting things to say recently about the Don't Say Gay Bill. I want to talk about the Don't Say Gay Bill and what it is and what Lance Walna had to say about it. But before we do, I want to catch you up on who this guy is, just in case you haven't heard of him before. I'll give you a little bit of background on him. This clip came out early January 2022. He is a deep, deep Trump lover, deep Trump supporter, and he always has been. But he's not just a Trump supporter. He seems to have like almost seamlessly worked Trump into his theology. And he's not just a regular old Christian. He's a Christian nationalist, a dominionist, and he goes a step beyond dominionist into something called Seven Mountains Dominionism. We'll get into it in a minute. For the moment, let me show you how he feels about Donald Trump. This is a clip of Lance Walna literally praying over a cardboard cutout of Donald Trump. I pray for this man. Lord, I pray you take the smell of smoke, the disappointment, the bitterness, the anger, the feeling of betrayal and loss. That it must be a terrible thing, Lord, to, 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 to actually feel as though you've been stolen in an election and that the nation that you love is, is suffering with it. Why does he have that? Why does he have this cardboard cutout of Donald Trump in his house? That is so weird. You know what's even weirder than that, though? This is mid-January 2022. That last one was early January 2022. Check this one out. These people live in paranoid land. Talking about anybody to the left of him, of course. They're not sane like us. They're not rational like us. Like us and Mike Lindell. Dude's got a cardboard cutout of Mike Lindell, too. How many cardboard cutouts does he have? This is weird. Seriously, why does he have all these cardboard cutouts, man? Does he have a cardboard cutout of Kat Kerr over there, too? By the way, I've ordered a lot of Mike Lindell slippers and a lot of Mike Lindell bathrobes and a lot of Mike Lindell towels for Christmas. My pillow, use the code Lance, you can get 50 to 60% off. I'm wearing Mike's slippers as I speak. I love Mike Lindell. He's one of the more rational parts of our army. Uh, okay, rational is not the word that I would use to describe this guy, but to each their own, I suppose. Anyway, let's get back on track. That was strange. 
let me show you what this guy thinks of his theology, or let me show you how he describes his own theology. Check this out. This is early March 2022, so it's pretty recent. Lord, I pray that you will raise up spirit-inspired leaders of the populist movement, that even in America, the Christian populace would begin to rise up to restore the nation. Christian nationalists that love America. Christian nationalists that love America. The dude is hoping that Christian nationalists will win elections. He is a self-described Christian nationalist. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that term. I'm sure a lot of you are, but just in case there are a couple who aren't. A Christian nationalist is somebody who believes that the United States should be occupied only by Christians and nobody else. Muslims, atheists, Buddhists, they should all get out. The more mild Christian nationalists want to deport them to another country, the more extreme ones want to find another way of getting rid of atheists from the country. The Christian nationalist ideology, the Christian, the Christian nationalist ideals are disturbing. And this guy is a self-described Christian nationalist. Christian nationalists that love America, and that are sane and rational and want to see America not destroyed by the globalists. I pray that you raise up a church that is so powerful and so disruptive to the agendas of these elites that some too has to happen. Why do the heathen rage and the rulers imagine a vain thing? This dude is disturbing on new levels. He's not just a Christian nationalist, though. He's a special brand of Christian nationalists called dominionist. I've talked about dominionism before. It, it comes with three key points, so I wanted to talk about these three key points to dominionism, and then we'll get into how Lance Walna applies these points, because it's relevant. It's important. So the first point to being a dominionist, dominionists celebrate Christian nationalism, as we just heard him doing, in that they believe that the U.S. once was and should once again be a Christian nation. In this way, they deny the Enlightenment roots of American democracy. Here's point two. Dominionists promote religious supremacy insofar as they generally don't respect the equality of other religions or even other versions of Christianity. That's right. If you are Methodist, if you're Baptist, if you're Catholic... You don't fit into the worldview that Lance Walna has. You think it wouldn't be so bad living in a Christian nation because you're a Christian? Trust me, the Christian nation that Lance Walna intends to and is working towards setting up, you don't want to live in, Christian or not. And here's point three. Dominionists endorse theocratic visions insofar as they believe the Ten Commandments or biblical law should be the foundation of American law and the U.S. Constitution should be seen as a vehicle for implementing biblical principles. That one's really the key out of the three, I think. The idea that the Constitution should enforce biblical values. Some of the more extreme dominionists, like Johnny Enlow, believe that we should just completely replace the Constitution with the old law from the Old Testament, like the Ten Commandments and then the other 600 and however many there were in the old law. The Ten Commandments were just the first 10. I think there are like a total of 613 old laws or something like that. They believe that we should replace the U.S. Constitution with the old 613 or however many laws there were in the Old Testament. That's what a dominionist is. But Lance Walna goes a step beyond traditional dominionist. He's what we call a Seven Mountains Dominionist. And in this clip, he explains what a Seven Mountains Dominionist is. This is actually a new clip, early March 2022. He's drawn seven, like, mountains or whatever, just zigzags on this whiteboard. And he's about to describe the idea behind Seven Mountains Dominionism. Listen to this. 3% of the population, roughly 3 to 4% of the population, are radical leftist elites. 30% of the population are evangelical born-again Christians that are inclined to go towards Pentecostal language. I mean, we're really out there. 30% against 3%, but they neutralize the church because they're also in religion. Okay, now he's going to go through these seven key areas of society and talk about how Christians should control them. He wants to get extremist evangelicals 
who intend to replace the U.S. Constitution with the 613 old laws from the Old Testament, or however many. And he needs evangelical extremists at the top of religion. That's his first one. He, he doesn't need to convert everybody in the United States to be evangelical. He doesn't need that to have a Christian nation. What he needs is to get people into leadership positions in these seven key areas of society. First one is religion. They neutralize the church because they're also in religion. They changed the definition of marriage so they've taken over family. Religion and family. They've totally taken over academia, so the education institutions are teaching leftist theology or leftist ideology and silencing uh, conservatives. They're controlling government right. So government, education, religion, family. He wants to get evangelical extremist leaders into leadership positions that can control or manipulate how these things are regulated or how they're controlled or whatever else. Controlling government right now, they've taken over legacy media, Hollywood, entertainment, and, uh, and arts, and uh, now they've got Wall Street. Religion, family, education, government, military, media. And uh, now they've got Wall Street. And the economic system. He wants to get evangelical extremist leaders at the top of each of those mountains, thus seven mountains dominionist. He believes that if he can get people to the top leadership positions in every one of those areas, we don't need to convert any more people. He can basically create a propaganda system that will convert people or force them out, one or the other. This is 3%. 30% of the, of the population is Christian. How is it that 30% are dominated by 3%? They have a worldview for bringing their kingdom here now. We're told to pray thy kingdom come, but we put it off to the second coming. There it is. We there put it, it off. They are organized and we are not. So God says, I'm going to send you a revival and we're praying for revival. And as we pray for revival, we think, well, watch what happens. That 30 will become 50%. It doesn't matter because the guards in the prison control what goes on with the inmates. You could have 75%. And if they control those high places, you still are in suppression because that's the story of history. So it's not just in having more. We certainly want souls. In eternity, that's the most important thing. And this is, Mario, where a lot of people get confused. Is it the kingdom more important? Is it Jesus more important? Is it souls more important? Of course, this isn't either or. It's both and. We want souls and we want nations. Jesus was promised nations for his inheritance, not just churches. Did you catch that at the end? We want nations. He wants to control nations this way. This is his plan. He wants to get his religious extremists, his, his zealots, into a position of power into a position of control in these seven areas. Economy, military, government, arts and media, education, family, and religion. I mean, we should be kind of concerned about this guy. We should definitely be concerned about what he's up to right now. Early November 2021, he started putting out this weird framing of the LGBT community. I wanted to listen to this because it's like a recurring theme with him. It's something that I've noticed cropping up a lot, especially recently. So let's listen to this podcast clip. I, it's just like a minute long or something like that from early November 2021. And then we're going to listen to his most recent framing of the LGBT community. Check this out. Just a little bit of lead up here. He's on a podcast episode with a co-host. This progressive fundamentalism is a religion. It's got its own false confessions. You have to make the confession. You can't just love your neighbor who might deal with homosexuality like you would love your neighbor who might be dealing with adultery or theft or something like that, but you have to celebrate it. If you don't make the confession, you're a, you're sinning and you deserve to have all the consequences. Years ago, I was 
deal with. Don't you love it how they frame this? Also, if you notice, they keep trying to frame things that they don't like as religions. I think the reason for that is twofold. The first reason that they want to frame it as a religion is so that they can call you a heretic if you support the LGBT community. Claim that you are part of another religious group. You can't both love God and love people in the LGBT community simultaneously. That's why they frame it that way, at least partly. And I think that the second reason that they frame it this way is because if they can make it into a religion, the next logical step that they can bring their audience to is that it's a cult. Not that the things are necessarily connected. Scientology, for example, isn't a religious cult. It's a psychology cult. And they only use religion for what they can get out of it, like tax-exempt status, for example. Heaven's Gate had religious undertones to it, but it was a UFO cult. I mean, there are a lot of cults out there that are not religious, not even a little bit, some of them. Religion does not have to be a part of the equation when you're dealing with cults, but a lot of people view it that way. They, they feel like there's one short leap from religion to cult, and I think that's one of the reasons why they frame it the way that they do. Anyway, let's keep listening. This is Lance Wellnow now. Have all the uh, years ago, I was you. confronted by an HR director of a major corporation, and I realized that it's the HR departments, the hiring HR departments in the corporations that were targeted by the, by the homosexual lobby at that point, the homosexual movement, in order to get gay representatives in the HR departments because they would hire. Okay, 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 one second. So he's saying he believes that gay lobbies are out there trying to hire gay people to work in HR in the HR departments because they would hire their own woke people and they would, in a sense, vet and get rid of the conservatives or evangelicals. So in what sense? Can you give me more information on this? Can you give me any proof at all of this? I don't believe you. Simple as that. You're making a claim and I reject that claim. That's ridiculous. What are you even talking about? That would actually probably be reason for a lawsuit if that were actually happening. You can't discriminate against people. And really, that's the basis of this whole argument, isn't it? We don't want to be discriminated against. We're trying to prevent discrimination. Simple as that. We don't want to be fired for being gay. We don't want to be hated or mistreated or harassed or bullied or any of that stuff. That's all we have ever asked. You can try to twist this around to make it into something else. That is all we've ever wanted. We've, we have only ever wanted to be treated as equals and nothing more and nothing less. But Lance Walna wants to twist it around to turn this into a persecution thing against him. Talk to a guy who this was actually what he was doing in a major corporation. Because I, I was talking like a Christian. I said, well, Christians are, you know, we're blessed are the peacemakers. We're not, we're not trying to hurt anybody. And Simply not true. Lance Walna, especially, specifically Lance Walna, he has a vested interest in removing the existence of anybody who is not a born-again Christian from the United States. Christian nationalist, remember? celebrates the fact that he's a Christian nationalist. He doesn't want gay people in this country. He can try to twist it around any way he wants, but we've listened to the clips from him. We know exactly what he believes. Go ahead and twist it around for us, Lance. I'm not trying to hurt anybody, and he said, you don't get it. It was a contempt and, 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 and anger. I bet. There was contempt and anger in this gay person's voice. He said, you don't get it. We don't want your acceptance. Who are you to accept us? You will affirm us. Do you know what that means? You are going to embrace us, affirm us, celebrate us. You're going to bow to the realization that, um, that we are legitimate and you cannot reject us. Even if your religion disapproves of homosexuality, you're going to change that. That is the least realistic story I have heard in my life, I think. I don't, I can't think of a single less realistic story that I have ever heard. I don't believe that for a second. It doesn't sound like something that I have ever heard. And believe me, I've been involved in this community for a long time. Just treat us like everybody else. That's it. That's all we've ever wanted. 
And I realize <clears throat> this is not what I thought it was. By the way, this doesn't represent all, all gays. No. But unfortunately, those, it's kind of like moderate Muslims. They exert no influence when it comes to uh, terrorism. Wow. He just compared the LGBT community to Muslim terrorists. That is what he just did. That's how he views the movement. I just want to put that on record. I want to make sure we're all fully aware of how Lance Wallnau views things before moving on to the next clip. Before we get there, this, this clip came out late March 2022. This was Lance Wallnau talking about the Don't Say Gay Bill. But before we actually get there, I wanted to read just a little bit about the Don't Say Gay Bill in case you're watching this five years in the future or in case you haven't really been following this closely. This is on the New York Times. Uh, the title is Opponents Call It the Don't Say Gay Bill. Here's what it says. The Florida bill limits what educators can say about gender and sexuality and could affect mental health services for all students. This is by Dana Goldstein, written March 18th, 2022. Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida is expected to sign House Bill 1557, which supporters call the Parental Rights in Education Bill, but the opponents refer to it as the Don't Say Gay Bill. It's become a national lightning rod in recent weeks, with President Biden calling the legislation hateful. Meanwhile, many conservatives have argued the bill is limited in scope and has been misrepresented by its critics. Here are key passages in the bill. This is what we should be paying attention to here. Instruction on gender and sexuality would be constrained in all grades. Schools would be required to notify parents when children receive mental, emotional, or physical health services unless educators believe there's a risk of abuse, abandonment, or neglect. Parents would have the right to opt their children out of counseling and health services. Parents could sue schools for violating the vaguely written bill, and districts would have to cover the costs. Florida would rewrite school counseling standards. I would say the key points here is it's erasing mental health protections for kids, and it's erasing privacy protections for kids. Instruction on gender and sexuality would be constrained in all grades. Let's just take a quick sneak peek at a couple of these sections. This is what the New York Times wrote about the instruction on gender and sexuality would be constrained in all grades part. This is the sentence that has earned the bill the don't say gay nickname. The language is vague and subject to interpretation. The preamble of the bill further muddles matters. It prohibits not only instruction around gender identity and sexual orientation, but also classroom discussion of these topics. Classroom instruction could mean eliminating books in the classroom with LGBTQ characters or historical figures. No classroom discussion is a broad phrase and could mean that teachers with a student with gay parents should not talk about those families with the entire class. If you think that's a stretch, it's not. This is the, the type of thing that the Republican Party wants right now in the United States. This is what they're aiming for. This is the next uh, section of concern. Schools would be required to notify parents when children receive mental, emotional, or physical health services unless educators believe there's a risk of abuse, abandonment, or neglect. This parental notification requirement appears to apply to any student regardless of age or circumstances. The student could be seeking health services for gender issues, sexuality, depression, substance use, a a parental divorce, or any other challenge. Still, this bill was written in large part because activists are worried about how schools respond to students who question their gender identity. They argue that schools should not affirm children who say they are trans if it means contradicting their parents. It's unclear how strictly schools would follow the directive to inform parents of every change in a student's health services. For example, if a child casually reaches out to a counselor to discuss stress about grades and in conversation also brings up other mental health concerns, would parents be contacted? According to the bill, I think the answer is yes. A section of the bill allows school staff to skip informing parents if there is risk of abuse, abandonment, or neglect. Counselors often wrestle with how to balance students' desire for confidentiality with the need to keep families informed about their children's well-being, but they argue that a blanket requirement for parental disclosure in all but the most extreme circumstances could lead, to, could lead students to approach counselors less frequently, degrading relationships that can be some of the most trusting in students' lives. Yeah, in my opinion, this entire bill is uh, just one more way to erode rights, to erode privacy 
which is something the Republican Party seems to have a vested interest in doing right now. So anyways, with that in mind, now that we have kind of the, the key ideas of the bill down, I mean, we could have gone a little bit further, but let's watch the next clip, Lance Walna, late March 2022, talking about the Don't Say Gay bill. Check this out. The media's calling it the Don't Say Gay Act uh, bill. And so, and DeSantis called him out for it the other day. He really went after a reporter who, who talked about that. He said, no, 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 we're talking about kindergarten, kindergarten to third grade. We need to be talking yeah, about yeah, that right now. That's not in the bill. I didn't see anything about that. From what I can tell, it was a K-12 to thing. Is that just fabricated propaganda they're spreading once again? I mean, that's what they're best at. We're talking about kindergarten, kindergarten to third grade. We need to be talking yeah, about yeah, we, that right this now. This is where you could push back and say, this, these are the must-be-gay activists. Yeah. You must convert. You must be gay. Yeah. You must accept it. You must embrace it. You must affirm it. You're not allowed to reject it. If you do, you should be deplatformed and all your money should be taken from you or you could just not say anything i mean you couldn't you don't have to bring this subject up you don't have to address this you don't have to be a d-bag you don't have to attack people for some attribute about them you don't have to hurt people you can just not hurt people just like that boom just not say something that is hateful and derogatory and damaging they can't manage to just keep to themselves and not hurt people. It's part of their ideology. It's part of their religion. Lance Walnaz specifically. It's part of his religion to hurt people. That's what it's all about for him. So he feels persecuted when he's not allowed to do that anymore. And that's why he's lashing out. That is why he's calling the LGBT lobby or whatever terrorists. That's why he's doing that. That's why he's calling them that because he feels persecuted when he can't, when he doesn't feel comfortable attacking them anymore. Absolutely grotesque. That's a religion, folks. Yeah. That's that's as bad as the Taliban. Yeah. You got the trans Taliban. Once again, another comparison to the Taliban. Isn't that fascinating? When there's a movement that he doesn't like, he always ties it to some religious qualities in some way. He always wants to make it out like it's a religion. So if you support it, you are supporting heresy. That is his whole tactic. And it is absolutely grotesque. Lance Walna is a very disturbing individual, and we should definitely be keeping an eye on this guy. Next, we're going to talk about Mike Lindell's most recent plan to retake the presidency for Donald Trump. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Next story I wanted to talk about is about Mike Lindell. I'm sure you guys have probably heard of him before. He's this conspiracy theorist that has been backing up every conspiracy Donald Trump's tried to push since the very beginning. But I want to give you a little bit of background on him because he's got some new conspiracies coming out. He just announced, and I want to catch you up on his previous ones real quick before we hit the latest ones. So let me remind you, of who Mike Lindell is and some of the crazier ideas that he's espoused. Mid-September 2021, not that long ago, he goes on Jim Baker's TV program. This should give you a little bit of background on some of his earlier conspiracies. Mid-September 2021. Why did the media respond to your documentary in the way they did? Well, they just buried it. Yeah, yeah, the absolute proof. Let me tell you the key part of that. That's probably the only time where I had a little fear and I had to pray, get on my knees and pray to God. Mm. Something else Mike Lindell likes doing is running sentences together and not stopping when there should be punctuation, just continuing to the next word. I, I guess I do that too sometimes when I'm talking, but the point is it's really hard to get a word in edgewise when I'm reacting to one of his clips. But Mike Lindell puts out this documentary, quote unquote documentary called Absolute Proof that he claimed was supposed to prove that the election was stolen from Donald Trump, okay? It was nonsense. As a matter of fact, he provided almost no evidence for it. And then he holds this cyber symposium. And the cyber symposium, he said to people, if you can prove that 
there was no fraud in the 2020 election, then I'll pay you $5 million or something like that. Well, that's the thing, Mike. It's not on us to prove that there wasn't. It's on you to prove that there was. He was trying to flip the burden of proof. That's how it works. So that's the strategy that he's been taking this entire time. He has no proof that the election was stolen, that there's all this fraud, and he keeps coming out with stranger and stranger claims. Let's keep listening to this. This was 10 days before the impeachment trial. And let me tell you, on 10 days before, and remember, at the time, that was like the end, towards the end of January, you know, the impeachment trials were uh, uh, Tuesday following, like, the February 8th, okay? Yeah, the impeachment trial against Trump was because he basically led a crowd to the Capitol to break into it and, and stop the vote counting and stuff like that. It got really, really ugly. Totally justified impeachment. But Mike Lindell is upset because he couldn't show his quote-unquote proof, his documentary at the impeachment trial. Listen to this. Yeah, and this was about maybe January 25th or so. I'm sitting there, I go, wow, they're going to impeach him. And I had word that they were going to impeach him. We were not going to be able to show evidence at that trial. They would not have shown it on TV. Well, first of all, your documentary is not quote-unquote evidence. Your documentary was supposed to be showing people the evidence. Why would anybody show your documentary at an impeachment trial? It's completely irrelevant to the entire thing. Show evidence if there was any. Guess what? There was none. There is no evidence that there's systemic fraud enough that it would overturn the election. That was just fabricated. It was made up. Also, the impeachment trial wasn't about whether or not Trump won the election. The impeachment trial was about whether or not he led a crowd to storm the Capitol on January 6th. And he did. Unfortunately, he wasn't impeached for that. Hopefully, he'll be charged for it. Not holding my breath, but it would be nice. Let's continue. And they impeach him now. And what were they going to do? Take everyone January 6th in this big fake insurgency or whatever that you're against the government. Right. And guess who was number one on that list to come and get me? Mm. And they were coming. They, I'm going, God, they're going to kill me. You know, I mean, they're going to put me and hang me, you know, basically. As where is all this coming from? You are like eating yourself alive with paranoia, Mike. Come on. I'm thinking, and at that moment, he said, you know, I got put on a, a documentary. Just put the evidence out there and make it. The, okay, so anyways, that's the guy, that's where the guy lives 24-7. Paranoia land, all the time. That was one of his earlier conspiracies. Now, we can just dismiss it and laugh about it and say whatever the dude's a wingnut and all that's true and i do i do i i do laugh about this but one thing i want to point out is high profile real people are believing it real people the guy in the middle here is general mckinnerney he's a retired united states general early august 2021 listen to this the next few weeks are going to be potentially rough. Uh, they're going to try to throw everything at us, uh, try to shut down the Internet, try to mandate vaccine passports, mask mandates, try to bring down the financial system and more. Uh, uh, OK, well, this clip came out. When was it? Early August 2021? Yeah. Did they do any of that? No, they didn't. This was all just fear mongering BS. It was fabricated from the very beginning. None of this happened. But does that change their minds? Of course not. They still, still live in paranoia land right now. Keep listening. Try to mandate vaccine passports, mask mandates, try to bring down the financial system and more. Um, and you guys have heard that as well, correct? Remember, the guy in the middle, this is General McKinnerney, United States military. A general. Yes. yes. For the audio audience, the next person to speak is General McKinnerney. And, and they're going to try to stop Mike Lindell's <clears throat> symposium, which he's offering $5 million to anybody who can prove him wrong on the movie the, uh, that he has made absolute proof no, that's not, no, nothing about what he just said is right. This is a United States general, dude, seriously. A U.S. general, McInerney, oh my God. Mike Lindell said that he would give $5 million to anybody who could prove that there was not fraud. He was trying to flip the burden of proof. Anybody who's taken a Logic 101 course in middle school 
or high school, low-level stuff, the very first thing you learn is about the burden of proof. How does a U.S. general not understand the burden of proof? And aside from that, who was going to try to stop the symposium from taking place? Nobody cared that the symposium was even happening. Nobody tried to stop it. Nobody even paid any attention when it actually happened. Mike Lindell claimed once the symposium took place, there'd be so much proof that Biden would be removed instantly and Trump would be reinstated as president. That's not how our electoral system works. That's not how our political system works. That would have never happened. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the fact that a retired U.S. general is buying this is just so heartbreakingly sad to me. That's why I talk about Mike Lindell. This, d people buy this. People buy it. Really. A retired U.S. general. The, uh, that he has made absolute proof that shows how the Chinese Communist Party and the Russians uh, use cyber warfare against the election system on the 3rd of November. Now, you know everybody poo-poos that and say... Yeah, I, I do. And you know why? Because the machines that were being used to count the ballots weren't connected to the internet. They weren't connected to a router. They couldn't have been hacked, quote-unquote, as Mike Lindell said they were, because they weren't connected to anything. It's just so obvious to me that they don't know what they're talking about when they say that the election was hacked for that reason. They weren't hooked up to the internet. But then again, it makes perfect sense to me why somebody of an older generation who didn't grow up with the internet would have a hard time grasping that concept. But a retired general? Really, has he never sat down with like a cybersecurity warfare like official to discuss how computers affect or how hacks affect this thing or that thing. Why is he even buying into this? It is so incredibly sad. Now, you know, everybody poo-poos that and say, well, that's been debunked and there's no evidence. It's not that there's no evidence. They weren't connected to the internet. Do you understand what that means? That's been debunked and there's no evidence. Anybody that says it's been debunked and no evidence is part of the group that participated in it. That is part of their psychological warfare campaign. This guy is such a sucker, and it's sad. It is sad to me that we had people like General McInerney, General Flynn, General Flynn at the top of the U.S. military spouting off nonsense like they do. It is so heartbreakingly sad. We should not have generals at the top of the U.S. military who are so completely uninformed on these subjects. Absolutely insane. So that was the cyber symposium era of Mike Lindell's conspiracy theories. He had this cyber symposium era that came along with his documentary, quote unquote, absolute proof that proved absolutely nothing. Neither did the symposium. Then we had the second era of Mike Lindell claims. This one I like to call let me come up with the name on the spot. Let's see. What am I going to call this one? This is the one I like to call Arrest Everybody. Okay, this is the Arrest Everybody era. This one was mid-January 2022. Check this out. You think Mike Lindell was discouraged when his cyber symposium and his documentary Absolute Proof turned up nothing? They didn't prove anything and they didn't change anything at all? You think he was discouraged? No. No, it didn't discourage him at all. This one was mid-January 2022. Check it out. We already have all the pieces of the puzzle. And you talk about evidence. We had enough evidence to put everybody in prison for life, 300-and-some million people. 300-something million. That is fascinating because there are only about 325 million people in the United States. And uh, how many voters are there? What, 200 million? Just a preliminary check here. I think that there are about 159 million people registered to vote or who voted in the 2020 election. That's uh, just kind of glancing through real fast. I think that's, that's right. Y you guys can fact check me if you want. 159 million, roughly. That's not 300 million, man. That's not 300 million. Where did the other... 150 million or so come from. Are you are you going to start arresting babies? People aren't born yet, and they're going to start sending them to jail? Uh, we, we had that all the way back to November, December. 
But what we have are these other things that had to happen, which was all evil revealing itself. I mean, evil's popping up like pocket gophers. I mean, they pop their heads up. It's whack-a-mole, right? I mean, it, it's everywhere. What's a pocket gopher? I feel like it's a euphemism for something I shouldn't be saying on my channel. So Mike Lindell claims that 300-something million people could be sent to jail. After this, in his defense, he did come out and say... What I meant was, I'll give you his defense. It was just as ridiculous as the original statement, but I feel like I got to give you his defense to it just because I'm just because I'm like that, I guess. He said what I meant was, I don't know if you've seen what the media twists the other day. I said, I said, you know, you guys, we have all the pieces to the puzzle. Let's just take the evidence. We have enough evidence. You could take 300 and some million people, every person in this country, pass it out. And we'd all go to prison for life. I said that the other day. And if you've seen the headlines of the fake news, Mike Lindell wants to put 300 million Americans in prison. If you're just born in the U.S., you're planning on going to prison by Mike Lindell. I don't even know what that means exactly. I don't understand how that's a defense at all. I just, it, it makes no sense at all, but whatever, whatever. I gave you the defense that he gave us, so I feel like I've done my due diligence. Here's the next era. This is what I like to call Mike Lindell is canceled era. Mike Lindell's bank cancels him. They closed his accounts because he was spreading all of these extreme conspiracy theories about the election. They didn't want to deal with subpoenas or any of that other stuff, so they said, Mike, we're going to do the kind thing and we're going to allow you to leave the bank instead of us canceling you. Because if we cancel your bank account, if we close it, it's going to be really, really hard for you to get another account with a different bank. So we're giving you the courtesy of allowing you to leave of your own free will and get an account somewhere else rather than us closing the account for you. And what did he say? He said, no. I'm not doing that. I'm staying, and you're going to keep my account open. Listen to this, mid-January 2022. They want us to leave their bank. They're, you're, what you're going to hear on these recordings are horrific. Okay, I've heard some horrific stuff. I've listened to the entire Jonestown tape from beginning to end, where he mixed up the flavor aid and all the way up to the very last moment when he lost his life. I've That's horrific. Let me tell you that. That's horrific. So what is it on these tapes that's so horrific, Mike? Somebody canceling your bank account is horrific? Do you understand the meaning of the word? Things are horrific. They, because now that you have, it's manifested from this, Steve. They're bringing back a year ago and all these terrible outlets like the Washington Post. And I just had a call from the Guardian today. And then you have the Daily Beast, all of these outlets now are attacking me, re-attacking me again, trying to say I'm some kind of a, um, let's subpoena Mike Lindell's records. As you know, I went after Pelosi and that fake committee they got going to scare everybody. Well, look, here's the thing about Mike Lindell. He was heavily involved in all of the January 6th stuff. He was heavily involved in trying to take the presidency from Biden and hand it to Trump illegally. He was caught walking into the White House when Trump was still president, carrying documents that were talking about instituting martial law. He's been heavily involved in this whole thing since the very beginning. Of course he would be subpoenaed. He has information that is pertinent to the investigation. If you do something wrong, you can expect to be subpoenaed. You know who isn't worried about being subpoenaed for like the January 6th committee? You know whose bank isn't canceling them because they're not worried about the government coming in and trying to subpoena records? My bank. My bank isn't worried about me getting involved in January 6th stuff. My bank isn't trying to cancel me. I'm not worried about getting a registered letter from a process server or something to show up to a court date because I wasn't there. I wasn't involved. I wasn't trying to overturn an election. If you don't do illegal things, you don't have to worry about the fallout. You don't have to worry about the consequences. You're dealing with consequences, Mike, because you took an action that was against the law because you were you acted in an unethical way. That's what happens. And by doing this, now these banks want to get part of the cancel culture. They want to cancel out all of these entities. The biggest one they worry about, Frank Speech, everybody. Oh my God, this dude constantly has to talk about Frank Speech. It's embarrassing at this point. So that was the bank cancellation era of Mike Lindell. He kind of went into a death spiral after that. He just went 
totally off the rails. This one's early February 2022. He was losing it at this point. He was freaking out, and uh, I don't know. You, you Just watch. Just watch what he says here. This is his appearance on his own thing, Lindell TV, I believe. The Lindell Report. Listen to this. Controls that are on my Facebook, and they go, there's no evidence, Mike. Give it up. Um, just go over to Lindell TV and go to the num- Lindell TV, too, and you're going to see Garland on there pouring out the evidence from Georgia. And then, you know, it won't it be funny because then it, when Fox says we're all American, when he, when Fox calls the United States of America, all the people liars and our great president Donald Trump a liar, we say, well, Fox, what, here, why don't you run this tape on your show instead of Sean Hannity and run it and then and watch the stuff come out? You know, then you, maybe we should get our cyber guys, Brandon, that looked at all the evidence to hook up our stream to Fox's. You know, like they have, like they all attack they all attack Lindell TV all the time. We can attack. Can you imagine? This is Sean Hannity all of a sudden. Breaking news right out of Georgia. We can't even put the the, the evidence pouring in, the pouring in Arizona, pouring in Wisconsin. <laughs> and Fox would you'd have the Murdochs going, Oh no, what are we Okay, so now he's talking about hacking Fox News to put up election conspiracy stuff because they refuse to have him on now. Fox News won't have Mike Lindell on to talk about his stuff anymore. I would say that I feel like the guy's lost his grip on reality, but I don't know that he has ever had it, honestly. I don't know that he's ever had a grip on reality. So, interestingly enough, that's not where the story ends. That that pretty much catches us up. Early March 2022, he shows up here at this event. He has an important announcement to make. Listen to this. I'm going to tell you right now we're doing, I've been working on it five months and we're doing a class action. You know, actually I'm announcing it here. I announced it on my program. You all watch frankspeech.com? Keep watching. (laughs) Every single event he goes to, everywhere he goes, he's always talking about Frank's speech TV. It is Hard to watch, honestly. It's kind of cringy that he just keep he can't help himself but to shout it out. This guy cannot help himself. It's like part of his personality to spread his social media around. It is hard to watch, honestly. It's hard to watch. It's a class action lawsuit against all machines and that they're defective devices. Uh oh. Class action lawsuit against all machines. I think we should be worried. I think we should be worried for my computer. I have a CRT TV. Does that count as a machine? I'm not sure. How many machines are we talking? And that they're defective devices, okay? Uh, Which machines are defective devices, and in what ways are they defective? Are we talking the espresso makers? I mean, are we talking every car in the world? Which machines are we talking about here? And how are those machines defective? Exactly, Mike. Lawyers worked on this for five months. We're getting county commissioners, county clerks. They're all the plaintiffs, and we've already got about 300 on board. And we're going to get rid of these machines once and for all for any election in history. Of course, he's talking about the ballot counting machines. I have to say, if they're defective, you need to tell us exactly how they're defective. I was being facetious about him suing all machines because that's exactly what he said. But you need to give us more information than just that. You need to tell us, or at least you need to tell the court, how they're defective. Exactly. I have a spoiler alert for you. They're not defective. He's been going on this hate campaign against Dominion and Smartmatic for like ever. In fact, I think he's in the middle of a lawsuit against those two companies right now, or or maybe just Dominion, I don't know. Like a billion dollar lawsuit or something, like along with Sidney Powell. By the time you see this, the lawsuit may be resolved, I don't know. Either way, I'm honestly surprised he's continuing on to spread these conspiracy theories about voting machines, despite the fact that he's gotten himself in legal hot water, like deep legal hot water, a billion times over already. He's still going on about it. He went on uh, Steve Bannon's TV show to make similar claims. Early March 2022. Check this one out. It's live link up with these tech- technology people that you can actually go and get it to, to individual states and get injunctions to basically shut down the machines to be used in the 2020 midterm elections and state elections, sir. 
Yeah, the 2022, that's correct, Steve. And in any elections, it would be over. So what he's saying here is his plan is to get injunctions to prevent states from counting ballots the way that they that they've been counting them for like ever. And he's trying to force them to count all of the ballots by hand, thus making the process way more expensive and way slower and way less accurate. That's what he's trying to do right now. It's a fool's errand. Exactly the type of thing I'd expect from Mike Lindell. Uh, We're going to get preliminary injunctions and it's with no machines because they cannot do elections accurately and they can and they can be manipulated 100 percent. They say, you know. Okay, Mike Lindell's original claims about them is that there was like software on the back end that nobody knew about that allowed people to feed information into them, like people from the 2010 census, they were marking them down as having voted. It was nonsense. It was all completely made up by Mike Lindell. It was fabricated. He also claims that you could weight results, like you could make one vote count as three-fifths of a person if you wanted. So if you wanted Donald Trump to lose, then you make each of his votes count for three-fifths of a vote instead of one full vote. It's just nonsense. All of it is nonsense. Like, there's, it has no basis in reality. Completely made up off the top of his head. No evidence for it whatsoever. But here we are. He's on Steve Bannon's show. Bannon was in the Trump administration. There are people who really genuinely believe this stuff. Like I said earlier, General McInerney, retired U.S. general, is spouting off the same stuff. And they're going to try to stop Mike Lindell's (coughs) symposium, which he's offering $5 million. We've got to address this, man. We've got to keep an eye on what's happening with Mike Lindell right now. I mean, his wheels came off and he rode the rims for 20 miles after that. It's entertaining as hell, to be perfectly honest, to watch him lose his mind and say he's going to hack Fox News and everything else. I, <laughs> I'm i really entertained by it, but uh, some of the stuff he says is kind of disturbing. We just have to keep an eye. Thank you guys for coming and giving this a listen, and I will talk to you next week. If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues, whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.